Thank you all for coming. This is a very exciting day we have ahead of us. And I'm just starting off the day with some introductory remarks, followed by some remarks by Mark Bagani. And so first, I just wanted to say thank you all for coming. We're really excited about this. We have a, a really nice group of people here, um, both great eminent climate scientists and eminent economists to talk to us about the a conversation about climate science and economics. And I wanted to start out by thanking YCI, thanking the Yale Climate and Energy Institute for providing the funding and the motivation and the effort, uh, you know, manpower behind this to make it all happen. And co-sponsorship by SCRIM. You can look at World Wide Web scrimhub.com. But uh, they, they're helping out as well. And uh, you can speak to, I guess, Chris Forrest and Klaus Keller if you're interested in learning more about that. So just wanted to start that out. And let me give some context. This is going to be an overview, no, no surprise to anyone here, I'm sure. So we have the fifth assessment report. The working group one, physical science basis, is already out. And so this is a really, time, this is a really timely meeting. There's a lot of discussion about this going on now. It was released in an unedited form on September 30th, 2013. I've spent many hours already pouring through it. It's not the easiest read, I will say. Um, the full report will be published by January 2014. But on top of that, we have the Conference of Parties. So there's lots going on in the policy world as well. So we have real action in the science world and real action in the policy world. So with COP19 in Warsaw, Paris going on, who knows if it's actually going to be achieving anything, but there's a lot of conversation about climate change going on. It's scheduled to end actually tomorrow. So given that, I just want to talk briefly about what, what we're talking about. This is really a conversation about uncertainty today. And there are many uncertainties. Now this is from the IPCC AR5. And it's fun. As an economist, they get to put up a physical science slide. Um, but what we see is there, you can quickly see the many different feedbacks and interactions going on. And many of these things are things that are going to be talked about today. So with all of these different factors going on, there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of things we're thinking about. The science is complex with uncertainty on many different levels, and many different feedbacks as well. So we see positive feedbacks like snow ice albedo, which could exacerbate things. And we can see cases like clouds with both, they have listed as both positive and negative feedbacks. So I'm not going to go through. Yes? One of these lights, that's a great idea. That one? Thanks. Much better. So now that you can see my slide, <laughs> this is again from the IPCC AR5 working group one. It's figure one, two. And really what we're looking at here are, are, are two things. One is this is emphasizing the different feedbacks that are occurring. And these are feedbacks that exacerbate uncertainty to the extent that we know them. It's also emphasizing the time scale in which different things are occurring. And so the time scale is another thing that I think is going to be useful for us to be talking about today. And I know Mark's going to talk about that more next. So with everything from hours to days to years to centuries, with ocean circulation down there at, at centuries, which is a really, really important component here. But this is a conversation about uncertainty. And the IPCC does have its own language about uncertainty. It has this virtual, from virtually certain to exceptionally unlikely. Very, very, very fun. Virtually certain, meaning 99 to 100%. Very likely, 90 to 100%. Ver likely, 66%. So what we have here are these, these different words that are ascribed actual meanings. I'm not sure exactly where the meanings come from in some cases. Um, actually, in many cases. But we have, we have language here. <coughs> That's going to help us try and describe uncertainty. But it's not actually quantifying. It's, it's partly quantifying uncertainty is a way to think about it. And the question is, and what I, want, I hope comes out of today, is what we really need to know for policy. So fundamentally, we need to know what's the climate sensitivity to greenhouse gas emissions? And what does a change in climate mean for human welfare? And these linked questions are why we're bringing this audience together, this group of people together. <clears throat> we really want to understand how uncertainty at the lower level downstream translates into uncertainty upstream. How does uncertainty in climate sensitivity and greenhouse gas emissions 
There are many different feedbacks going on, many things going on. How does that translate into this change in climate into human welfare? And so that's where the economic models and integrate assessment models come in. I'm going to give an overview of what, how the IPCC sets up their standard approach. And I'm sure people here are going to add a lot more detail to that. So I will be quick here. The equilibrium climate sensitivity is something that we're going to probably talk a lot about. In the integrated assessment models, it's often called the temperature sensitivity coefficient. It's a key coefficient in these economic models. How much the global mean near surface air temperature changes with the sustained doubling of CO2. <clears throat> now, it's obviously a simplification. Everyone recognizes that. There's no regional variation in this one number. The time scale is vague. There are many greenhouse gases. Um, so there are, it's clearly a simplification, but it's you know, been very useful. And the modern climate science scientists work with it very, very often. And it's then translated into the integrated assessment modeling community. <clears throat> and in contrast is also the transient climate response which is capturing the path to get to the equilibrium in the modern climate models. It captures the annual mean surface temperature following a steady increase in forcing over a 50 to 100 year time period. So we, have, we can have uncertainty on, under both of these. And of course, we're missing other details as well by focusing on these two. So we have Anthony Milner here. And these are some PDFs compiled by Anthony Milner just to give us a sense about this broad set of distributions. So these are probability density functions giving us the distribution of the equilibrium climate sensitivity parameter, so the temperature sensitivity parameter in the economic models. And you see here, this, this ranges up to 10. So many of them are fat-tailed. So there's some probability of extreme events, of thresholds, of feedbacks, leading to much larger changes. And we see uh, much more quickly dropping off at the beginning. Now here we have, and this is, that's a little tough to read, which is not entirely my fault, um, but uh, we see Chris Forrest is in there. We see many of the people who are here are, are actually have contributed to this. So this is one way of quantifying the uncertainty. We're here, we're attempting to actually put down, pin down numbers on the distribution of what we expect could happen with the doubling of CO2. How about the IPCC, the AR5? So here, the equilibrium climate sensitivity distributions are not done. They don't actually have full distributions. But they do give us a sense of the depth of distribution. So what we see here is many different methods being used to compute the climate sensitivity, everything from paleoclimate to climatological constraints and instruments. And then a combination at the bottom. It's not entirely clear where that combination comes from. I'm hoping someone here can, can help me understand where that combination comes from. Um, but <clears throat> what we do see is, is that, that gray area, and the gray shaded range marks the likely, so likely was 66 to 100%, the likely 1.5 to 4.5 degree range. Um, <clears throat> so that's the likely 1.5 to 4.5 degree range, 66%. <clears throat> and so one thing that you could do, so say you are an integrated assessment modeler who has a temperature sensitivity coefficient in your model, you could imagine taking that and, and fitting some sort of distribution. What about a normal distribution? That's not going to be fat-tailed. You could imagine fitting some distribution over that. And that's probably the, the very first thing that, that you know, an economist like myself who's working in an integrated, integrated assessment model would think to do. Now, I see that there are probably issues with that. And that's, these are some of the issues that I hope we talk about today. <clears throat> also, the transient climate response. I loved it in the IPCC. They actually do have some distributions for the transient climate response. So should, I should mention that this is the draft version. So it, it is subject to change. Uh, but this is the draft version that is posted on the web, not the fully published version. But should integrated assessment models, IAMs, include a transient response roughly in line with the central estimate here? How does this play? should this play into the models as well is a really good question. And at the moment, in most cases, it doesn't. But perhaps it does in some cases. And we'll hear about that as well, um, particularly later in the day. We'll hear about to the extent that which these types of responses play a role in the models as well. So let me lay out the goals for the day. <clears throat> the way I see the goals for the day, and maybe you all are coming in with different expectations, but my goals for the day is I want to start and re reinvigorate. This conversation has begun. I will, I will grant that other people have talked about this before. A timely conversation. I mentioned all the things going on right now. 
between climate scientists and economists about climate sensitivity and about uncertainty in climate sensitivity. We really want to do better at trying to quantify this uncertainty and understand it better. What is the latest in climate scientists, in climate science, that economists should know? This is an important factor, especially economic modelers who are working with the integrated assessment models. <clears throat> what do economists need as inputs from climate scientists to better parameterize their model? This is something that I hope the discussion will cover as well. And that could be useful for climate scientists to know so that they can better understand how their, their own work is being used as an input into the policy process. Then what, what does the best evidence suggest for the distribution of climate sensitivity to use in an economic modeling study? <clears throat> so I will say that I have another motivation for this workshop. <clears throat> Bill Nordhaus and I are working under a DOE-funded grant to try and understand how uncertainty in primitives, such as the climate sensitivity, lead to uncertainty in outputs of climate models. So in emissions paths, uncertainty in welfare, in damage estimates. So we're actually doing, looking at climate sensitivity, we're looking at population, we're looking at GDP, we're looking at some very primitive, some primary factors. We're trying to find the very best, the very, very best distributions of uncertainty over those three different parameters. And we're mapping them through a whole slew of models. So we have six or seven models in there right now. Hopefully maybe we'll get one or two more. And these models are integrated assessment models that use these primitive parameters, including climate sensitivity, as an input. And then at the end, you could imagine they, they have a whole bunch of economic calculations in there. And they spit out at the end emissions and, and welfare and a variety of other factors that can then be used to, to understand better the economic implications for different policies to address climate change. So we have this project underway. And, and so I have added motivation to really want to understand what's going on here. Because we're looking for that sensitivity distribution. We want to understand what is that distribution look like? How should we be modeling that in these models? And what's the best, what is the, the latest state of the climate science? So from my own personal view, I'd be very interested to hear what people think we should do. Should we be using the IPCC? Um, should we be modifying it somehow? And what should we be using? But beyond that, it's also a valuable bellwether about our state of the knowledge. And I think we have some great people here who can help us understand what our state of the knowledge is. Let me give some ideal outcomes for today. First of all, from a broader picture, a better understanding of what the latest climate science says about climate sensitivity. So if not the IPCC AR5 distributions, you know, what distributions? If not the ECS TCR processes, so if you don't want to talk about equilibrium climate sensitivity, you want to talk about Earth system sensitivity or another way of looking at sensitivity, how, how should we be modeling those? How should those feed into models? Um, and that will be talked about today as well, so I'm not going to go into that. But I also hope that there's an exchange here that helps clients, climate scientists understand how their work is being used in the integrated assessment modeling community. Then the third one, I have a question mark. It's quite possible that we could have some written output come out of this. There's a possibility of bringing some of us together on either an academic article or even just an op-ed that lays out some of the insights gleaned today. I hope that there will be some insights gleaned today. I imagine there will be many. And can possibly bring together some of these insights, and either as an op-ed to the popular press and or as, as an academic article that brings together some of the ideas that have been brought out that haven't yet been put forth in a way that's a constructive way that uh, others might find interesting as well.